welcome to a Memorial Day edition of Snark of the Week. I'm Melissa Melton. So I know this is only supposed to be a Saturday thing, or that's at least how I envisioned it when I started. But as you can see from last Saturday, there was a ton of stuff, and it took a really long time. And I'm thinking maybe I'm going to start breaking this down into smaller, more digestible pieces throughout the week. Especially since there are times when some something comes up and I just want to tell people right away and I, it waiting for a whole week seems like an awfully long time to share it. So let's just try this and see how this works out. Today's show has a mostly military focus and considering it's Memorial Day that does seem appropriate. But let's just go ahead and get started. This is from May 26. Defense Department seeks legal authority to deploy reservists onto American streets. Posse Comitatus states that only under certain circumstances expressly authorized by the Constitution or an act of Congress can the military be present on American streets, but if the Defense Department has their way, a new authorization act will give them the power to order the armed forces to be used against the American public. And we've seen this already, like the drill they did last month in Minnesota streets with armed military walking around, really just trying to get people accustomed to that site and the militarization of America. I mean, no, that's just a drill. They're just practicing for something that's not ever going to happen here. So no worries. Traditionally, there had to be a declaration of emergency or disaster from the president for armed forces to act. With this new act, they don't need that. They can act for whatever reason they're ordered to. So that makes me feel good. I'm, I feel really good about that. And speaking of things I feel really good about, this also came out. The FBI is now officially spying on your internet activity. Yay! The FBI has probably been monitoring the web activity of random citizens for quite some time, but today, as CNET reports, the Law Enforcement Bureau has formed a dedicated unit for the purpose of internet surveillance. Apparently, they have a mandate to try and crack Skype conversations, analyze internet traffic data, and build wiretapping hardware. Doesn't sound like a police state to me. But apparently, it, we, should be, we should be okay with this because their goal is to develop new technologies to help make it easier for other law enforcement agencies to spy on us. So they won't actually be doing it. So that makes me feel so much better. And speaking of more government spying, the U.S. Supreme Court should hear argument in a case central to the law that allows spying on citizens in the U.S. without a warrant in the name of counterterrorism just as a partisan Congress decides whether to renew the law. In its simplest terms, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act allows the government to eavesdrop on U.S. electronic communications, such as phone calls and emails, without a warrant in the U.S. as long as one end of the communication ends up outside of the U.S., or I guess starts outside of the U.S., either way. And the Obama administration, just like the Bush administration, has argued that individuals have to show they were monitored by the program to have any standing to challenge it in court. No, I'm sorry, but isn't this the whole point of spying is that you don't know you're being spied on? Isn't that the very meaning of that word? The program's target list is secret, and the government doesn't tell you you're being monitored, obviously. So therefore, you don't have standing to argue it's wrong. See how that works? Isn't that brilliant? And in the most spyingest show ever, here's another one from the Daily Mail Online. Revealed, hundreds of words to avoid using online if you don't want the government spying on you. And they include pork, cloud, and Mexico. Apparently, a, somebody put in a Sunshine Law request, Freedom of Information, to get Homeland Security to release basically an analyst handbook that shows a list of the words that they target on social media sites to spy. Now, the department chiefs insist that this is not aimed at policing the internet for disparaging remarks about the government or signs of dissent but just to provide awareness of potential threats, even though these comments they're looking for, quote, reflect adversely on the government. So just trust and believe that, okay? And don't even be alarmed that this list is basically the most broad, ambiguous list of words ever, short of, say, I don't know, the whole entire dictionary. I mean, look at this. You got the word smart on here, the word watch, the word wave? 
I mean, if you use the sentence, I went to the airport to ride on an airplane, those two words, airport and airplane, those are on there. Pork is on there. And my question is, who honestly believes that actual terrorists are going to sit and hatch their nefarious terrorist plans using all of these blatant specific words just openly on Twitter or something or Facebook? Is that really going to happen? Really? Are these the dumbest terrorists ever in the history of time? I mean, I, I don't really. It's this kind of ridiculousness that I'm sure makes us all feel much better about DHS purchasing 450 million rounds of hollow point ammunition. What else? Ah, Clinton. U.S. wars with Al-Qaeda on the web. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said Wednesday that experts based in the State Department swapped Al-Qaeda ads on Yemeni websites bragging about killing Americans with one showing the deadly impact of Al-Qaeda tactics on the Yemenis themselves. Our team plastered the same sites with altered versions of the ads that showed the toll Al-Qaeda attacks have taken on the Yemeni people, Clinton said. So remind me again how this works, because I seem to be totally confused. Al-Qaeda used in an Afghanistan offensive against the Soviet Union in the late 70s, that's good. Al-Qaeda allies with us in the Kosovo-Bosnia thing in the late 90s, that's good. Al-Qaeda plus 9-11, that's bad. But Al-Qaeda plus Libya, that's good. Yemen plus Al-Qaeda, bad. Syria plus Al-Qaeda, good. Can someone explain to me the math here? Because it's, it's really not making a whole lot of sense to me. I mean, did I miss something? Did we actually declare a war in Yemen that we have U.S. troops on the ground there? Is, did, did that actually happen? Did Congress actually declare war there? How many more unconstitutional wars are we going to concurrently have? Just out of curiosity. Oh, that's, that's, that must be it right there. I get it now. And speaking of more war-related idiocy, how about this? Neocons in Washington Post. Military, military strike on Iran could, quote, calm nerves in the region. The Washington Post seems to think the United States is not in enough overseas wars. It runs a piece by Matthew Kronig and Jamie Fly urging us to pursue military options in Iran. On Iran, it's time for Obama to set clear lines for military action. So, yeah, that you know what always calms my nerves? Because it's not a nice warm cup of tea or a nice bath or a good book. That's, that's not how I calm down. I don't meditate. I always just war. It's just war. War calms my nerves. Just totally full on death and destruction and explosions and just that's, you know, when you when you need to calm down war that's that's the way to go apparently and not just any war preventative war purely preventative war that is not in the defense of an immediate threat in any way i mean pff, international law who 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 follows international law or like the constitution <laughs> like what the constitution I mean, the Obama administration hasn't been following that this whole freaking time. So, you know, let's just have some more war, really calm everyone's nerves. And speaking of war, the Pentagon spending spree. Are you wondering where your tax dollars are going? Then take a look at the $642.5 billion stuffed into the National Defense Authorization Act, which the House of Reps recently approved. So, the U.S. military budget is six times that of China and tops the next 17 highest spending countries combined. And as I've pointed out before, it has nothing to do with supporting the troops. It's not about America being safe to go off and fight a bunch of preventative wars and do a bunch of empire and nation building. That's not defense. That's offense. And $642.5 billion sure looks like a lot more money when you see all the zeros attached to it, doesn't it? So yeah, let's buy the Pentagon some more really expensive weapon systems that we don't need and that they haven't even asked for. And as this writer points out, throwing money at the Pentagon doesn't buy us safety. It just means our grandchildren will be paying for weapon systems we don't need and can't use because a defense contractor has buttered up a lawmaker at taxpayer expense. Yep, that sounds about right. I wanted to bring up one more time that Occupy Bilderberg is this weekend, and I'm going to put some information below this to the different groups that will be there. 
um, and how you can donate to that cause or get involved in that cause. So we've got InfoWars, We Are Change, the Intel Hub, and there's a Facebook event page. And just go ahead and check out how you can get involved in this. Any way you can to help is good. We need to let this group of elitist, globalist, tower-grabbing CEOs and bankers and media officials know that they don't get to pull the strings and run the whole entire world anymore in secret. That we know they exist and we know what their devilish agenda is. These are the same group that were planning the whole Iraq war back in 2002 before that went down. They want to sit back behind the scenes and try to pull all the strings like the world is some giant board game of risk and not real life. They want us all to be serfs and slaves and just do what we're told and live in their little matrix where they pull all the strings. It's sick. And we need to go out there and show them that we know who the real 1% is. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a slave any longer in this creepy, elitist-run, globalist control grid that they've obviously done such a great, wonderful job. Anyway, so that's May 31st through June 3rd, and I will put all that information below. And until next time... This has been Snark of the Week, uh, Memorial Day. I'm Melissa Melton. My blog is truthstreammedia.com. I'll talk to you guys later.